One of those, a popular one, is called the Cam Clay model. And so uh, if you look at this equation carefully, uh, it's essentially the equation of an ellipse uh, where we P and Q have been defined P. Uh, again, I don't know why these fractions don't show up sometimes. But uh, P is the mean effective stress, so the average of the effective principal stresses. And what this Q is, uh, is a measure of really, it's a measure of the amount of shear, okay? It's, technically it's called, it's the square root of 3J2. Um, sometimes also you'll, you'll see this as the, the von Mises stress, but J2, if you remember last time, uh, we talked about invariance a little bit. So J2 is just an invariant of the deviatoric stress. This is an invariant. It's the second invariant of the deviatoric stress. And the deviatoric stress, so I'm going to say SD is equal to the stress minus PI, where P is, you know, this is a lowercase p. It's not the pore pressure. It's the mean, of, it's the mean, um, well, that's, that's actually not quite true. Let's just say it's one-third the trace of, of S. So if, if S is this, the stress tensor, the trace of S is the sum of the diagonals, right? So if I subtract one-third the, the trace, then what I get is what's left is a, is a stress tensor that's traceless, or the, and that's a measure of the amount of shear that's happened. Okay, so I'm not going to test you on this. I just wanted to write it down. So J2 is then the second invariant of this guy. And if you, if you work it out in terms of the principal stresses, then it's just this, where I've squared the left-hand side so to get rid of the square root. But uh, anyway, and then M is the slope Q over P. So, you know, here this M is the slope, that's the shear failure line, and then that elliptical equation defines these curves. So they're roughly elliptical. All right, so basically, your failure envelopes now, including this end cap, are going to be here. In this case, failure is, is a sort of not the right word because if if the state of stress is up here, then yes, the material fails. You know, it, it, it fractures. Right? It, it can't it can't hold any strength. Um, but out here, it it really just means inelastic behavior. So I squeeze it and I let it go and there's permanent deformation. Right? A lot of times you, you might hear the word plasticity associated with this type of behavior, but I don't like the word plasticity when you're talking about a rock because you know, the, the, the actual underlying mechanisms aren't associated with anything actually plastic. Right? So I, I, like, I prefer the word inelastic. So it just means it, do, it doesn't have elastic behavior. It doesn't go back where it was. So what we're looking, what we're really looking at here in terms of the yield surface, and I'll show you a picture on the next slide, is this sort of a side view of the yield surface. So we're used to looking down the yield surface. Okay, what we're looking at here is sort of projection from the side. And it should be real clear with the next uh, slide. <coughs> 